The war between Cao Cao and Jiang Xu was fought between the warlords Cao Cao and Jiang Xu between 197 and 199 in the late Eastern Han Dynasty of China. It concluded with Jiang Xu's surrender to Cao Cao. Chapter 1 Background In 196, the warlord Cao Cao led his forces into the ruins of the old imperial capital, Luoyang, where he met Emperor Shen, the figurehead Han Emperor, who had been held hostage consecutively by the warlords Dong Chuo, Li Ju and Go Si since his coronation in 189. He had only escaped from Chang'an in late 195 after being held hostage by Li Ju and Go Si since Dong Chuo's death in 192. Cao Cao treated the emperor respectfully and escorted him from Luoyang to his own base in Shu, which became the new imperial capital. In the meantime, the Zhu and Go Si's power block in Chang'an, and the Guangzhong region started to weaken and break up, especially after Emperor Shen's escape. Zhang Ji, a former ally of Li Zhu and Go Si, led his followers out of the Guangzhong region into Jing province, which was governed by the warlord Lu Biao. In an attempt to establish a foothold in Jing province, Zhang Ji led his men to attack Rang County but was killed by a stray arrow in battle. Instead of taking revenge against Zhang Ji's followers, Lu Biao took pity on them and made peace with Zhang Ji's nephew and successor, Zhang Xu. He also gave Zhang Xu and his followers control over Wang Keng in northern Jing province. Chapter 2 Battle of Wang Keng Sometime between 5 February and 6 March 197, Cao Cao led his forces to attack Zhang Xu. When his forces reached the Yu River, Zhang Xu surrendered without putting up a fight. Cao Cao was so pleased that he threw a banquet for Zhang Xu and his followers. During the banquet, Diane Wei, a military officer under Cao Cao, stood guard beside his lord and held a giant battle axe whose blade was one chi long. Zhang Xu and his followers did not dare to look up when they toasted to Cao Cao. Cao Cao stayed in Wanking for more than ten days after receiving Zhang Xu's surrender. During this time, he became attracted to Zhang Ji's widow and took her as his concubine. Zhang Xu, feeling outraged and humiliated, plotted revenge against Cao Cao. Cao Cao heard about Zhang Xu's unhappiness and he planned to have Zhang Xu assassinated. Earlier on, Zhang Xu's advisor, Jia Xu, suggested to his lord to ask Cao Cao if he could station his troops at a higher location near Cao Cao's camp. Following Jia Xu's advice, Zhang Xu also asked Cao Cao, My troops have too few chariots and they are too heavy. Can I let my troops wear heavy armor? Cao Cao did not suspect anything and he approved Zhang Xu's request. Dot at the time, Zhang Xu had a close aide Huchia, who was known for his exceptional courage. Cao Cao was so impressed by Huchia that he gave him some gold as a gift. As Jiang Xu already knew that Cao Cao wanted to have him assassinated, he thought that Cao Cao was trying to bribe Hu Chia to be the assassin, so he quickly launched a preemptive surprise attack on Cao Cao's camp. As Cao Cao was totally caught off guard by Jiang Xu's attack, his forces suffered a disastrous defeat, especially when Jiang Xu had already planned out the attack and deployed his troops near Cao Cao's camp. Cao Cao had no choice but to retreat with only a few horsemen accompanying him. Diane Wei remained behind with about a dozen of his men to cover Cao Cao's retreat. All of them were eventually overwhelmed by Jiang Xu's forces and killed in battle. During his escape, Cao Cao injured his face and foot when his horse, Juying, threw him off its back after being hit by arrows. Cao Cao also sustained an arrow wound in his right arm. Cao Anj Cao Cao's eldest son, gave his horse to his father to help him escape. Cao Anj and Cao Cao's nephew Cao Anmin were both killed by Jiang Xu's forces later. Chapter 3, Battle of Wyan As Cao Cao and his remaining forces retreated to Wyan County, Jiang Xu's forces continued to attack them along the way. Only Yu Jin, a colonel under Cao Cao, managed to lead his unit on an orderly retreat towards Wyan County and make his men stay together despite suffering many casualties and losses. When Jiang Xu's forces eased off their attacks, 
Eugenry grouped his men and they marched to Wyan County in a dignified manner even though they lost the battle. Before reaching his destination, Eugen learnt that the Kingshu Corps, an elite unit in Khao Sao's army composed of former Yellow Turban rebels, had taken advantage of the chaos to pillage villages along the way. He then led his men to attack and punish the Kingshu soldiers. Some Kingshu soldiers managed to flee to Wyan County, meet Cao Cao, and falsely accuse Eugen of committing the atrocities they were responsible for. When Eugen reached Wyan County, instead of going straight to meet Cao Cao and explain himself, Eugen immediately went to set up defensive fortifications around Cao Cao's camp because he knew that Cao Cao, given his wisdom, would not believe the Kingshu soldiers' lies, though there was no rush for him to explain himself. He also thought that it was more important to strengthen their defenses in case Jiang Xu attacked again. Yu Jin was proven right, Cao Cao also praised and rewarded him for his efforts. At Wyan County, Cao Cao managed to rally his remaining troops to hold their ground and fend off a final wave of attacks by Jiang Xu's cavalry. After failing to defeat Cao Cao at Wyan County, Jiang Xu retreated to Rang County, where he met up with Lu Biao. Cao Cao broke down in tears when he heard of Diane Wei's death, and later had Diane Wei's body retrieved and buried in Shengyi County. He returned to his base in Shu after that. Chapter 4, Battles of Yi, Huyong, and Wyan After Cao Cao left Wyan County, many counties in two commanderies, Nanyang and Sangling, rebelled against him and defected to Jiang Xu's side. When he sent his cousin Cao Hong to lead troops to attack and recapture those counties, Jiang Xu and Lu Biao's forces defeated Cao Hong and forced him to retreat to Yi County. During this time, Jiang Xu and Lu Biao's forces attacked Cao Hong at Yi County several times but Cao Hong managed to defend his position. Sometime between 28 November and 26 December 197, Cao Cao launched another campaign against Jiang Xu and personally led his forces to Wangkeng. At the bank of the Yu River, he held a memorial service to mourn the people who lost their lives in the previous campaign against Jiang Xu. During the ceremony, he wept inconsolably and touched the hearts of everyone present at the scene. Lu Biao sent Deng Ji, a military officer under him, to lead troops to occupy and guard Huyong County. Cao Cao later led his forces to attack Huyong County, conquered it, and took Deng Ji as a prisoner of war. He then followed up by attacking Wyan County and succeeded in capturing it too. Chapter 5, Battle of Rangcheng Cao Cao returned to his base in Shu sometime between 26 January and 23 of February 198 after his second campaign against Jiang Shu. Between 24 April and 23 May, he launched a third campaign and led his forces to attack Jiang Shu at Rang County. Between 22 June and 21 July, Lu Biao sent reinforcements to assist Jiang Xu and attempt to block Cao Cao's army from the rear. Around this time, Cao Cao received intelligence that Tian Feng, an advisor to his rival Yuan Shao, had suggested that Yuan Shao should take advantage of Cao Cao's absence from Xu to launch an attack on the imperial capital, seize Emperor Shen, and bring him to his base in Yi. Upon hearing this, he immediately lifted the siege on Rang County and prepared to return to Shu. However, he could not retreat as Jiang Shu came to intercept him, so he ordered his troops to retreat carefully while ensuring that their camps were always linked, so that they could back each other up in the event of an enemy attack. Cao Cao wrote a letter to his advisor Shun Yu, who was stationed in Shu, even though the enemy has traveled several li in a day to catch up with me, I have a plan to deal with them. When I reach Anshong, I will definitely defeat Jiang Xu. When he reached Anshong County, Jiang Xu and Lu Biao's forces occupied the strategic locations in front and behind, trapping him and his forces in between. Cao Cao then ordered his troops to secretly dig tunnels and transport their supplies and heavy equipment back to Xu under the cover of night, while he and his remaining troops hid themselves and waited in ambush. In the morning, when Jiang Xu received news that Cao Cao's camps were empty, he thought that Cao Cao had fled so he wanted to lead his troops in pursuit. However, Jia Xu, his advisor, 
warned him not to pursue Cao Cao and predicted that he would lose if he did. Zhang Xu ignored him and went ahead. Just as Jia Xu foresaw, Zhang Xu fell into Cao Cao's ambush and was soundly defeated. When Zhang Xu came back after his defeat, Jia Xu told him to attack again and predicted that he would win this time. Zhang Xu said, I didn't listen to you earlier, which resulted in my defeat. Now that I have lost, why should I attack again? Jia Xu replied, Changes have taken place. You'll win if you swiftly attack now. Zhang Xu heeded Jia Xu's advice and attacked Cao Cao again. He won the battle the second time. After the battle, Zhang Xu asked Jia Xu, When I led my best troops to attack Cao Cao while he was retreating, you predicted I would lose. When I led my troops to attack Cao Cao again just after he defeated me, you predicted I would win. Your predictions turned out to be accurate. But why is it that your predictions seem so counterintuitive? Jia Xu replied, It's easy to understand. General, you may be skilled in warfare, but you're still no match for Cao Cao. When Cao Cao withdrew his forces, I knew he would personally lead his rearguard to cover his retreat. Even though your troops are well trained, Cao Cao is better than you as a military leader, and his troops are as equally well trained as yours. Therefore, I knew you would lose. When Cao Cao first attacked you and decided to retreat halfway even though he didn't make any mistakes, I believed something must have happened in his base. After he defeated your pursuing forces, he would lower his guard and hastily retreat. His officers will then take command of the rear guard. They may be brave, but they are no match for you. Therefore, I knew you would win them even though you're leading a group of soldiers who have just been defeated. Zhang Xu was very impressed with Jia Xu's analysis. Cao Cao returned to his base in Xu sometime between 20 August and 18th of September 198. When Xu Yu asked Cao Cao how he knew he would definitely defeat Zhang Xu when he wrote the letter to Xu Yu earlier during the battle, Cao Cao replied, The enemy wanted to prevent me and my men from retreating. In doing so, they were forcing us to fight for our lives. That was when I knew we would definitely win. Chapter 6, Zhang Xu's Surrender In 199, when Cao Cao and Yuan Shao were about to clash at the Battle of Guandu, Yuan Shao sent a messenger to meet Zhang Xu and propose an alliance between them against Cao Cao. Zhang Xu wanted to agree, but his advisor Jia Xu told Yuan Shao's messenger, I say no, thank you. To Yuan Benchu. He can't even accommodate his own brother. What makes him think he can accommodate talents from around the empire? A shocked Jiang Xu turned to Jia Xu and asked, Why do you have to say this? What will become of me now? Jia Xu replied, Why don't you submit to Cao Cao? Jiang Xu asked, Yuan Shao is powerful while Cao Cao is weak. Besides, I'm also Cao Cao's enemy. What will happen if I submit to him? Jia Xu replied, That's why it is better for you to submit to Cao Cao. He controls the empire in the name of the emperor. This is the first reason why you should submit to him. Yuan Shao is militarily more powerful. You have less troops than him, so even if you join him, he won't regard you highly. Cao Cao has less troops. If you join him, he'll be delighted. This is the second reason why you should submit to him. A man who aspires to become a great ruler will be more willing to put aside personal enmities and make his virtues known to people. This is the third reason why you should submit to Cao Cao. I hope you won't have any more doubts. Jiang Xu heeded Jia Xu's advice and led his forces to surrender to and join Cao Cao. Jiang Xu surrendered to Cao Cao sometime between 6th of December 199 and 3rd of January 200. When Jiang Xu showed up, Cao Cao came out to welcome him, held his hand, and hosted a banquet in his honor. Apart from recommending Emperor Shen to enfoff Jiang Xu as a marquis and appoint him as general who spreads martial might, Cao Cao also arranged for one of his sons, Cao Jun, to marry Jiang Xu's daughter. 
Zhang Xu fought on Cao Cao's side during the Battle of Guanyu against Yuan Shao and was promoted to general who defeats the Chiang for his contributions. Chapter 7 In Popular Culture The Battle of Wanking is featured in Koei's video game series Dynasty Warriors as a playable stage and the highlight of Diane Wei's story mode. If the player is not playing as Diane Wei, Diane Wei makes his last appearance in that stage and does not appear again in the subsequent stages. In Dynasty Warriors 7, after Cao Cao's escapes from the castle, he attacks Jiang Xu with Xia Ho Dun and Xu Chu and ends up gaining Jia Xu in his ranks. If Jiang Xu is defeated by Cao Cao, it is not known if he was killed by Cao Cao or retreated from the battle. <laughs>